Now, today's grandmaster is none other than Lyubomir Lyubovich, who was, as I mentioned, born on this day in 1950 in Titovo, Udsici, Yugoslavia, now known as Serbia, of course, Uzici or Usici. He was international master in 1970, grand master in 1971, Yugoslavian championship in 1977, as well as 1982, Canadian Open winner um, in 1974. He reached as high as third in the world rankings in 1983, although he never succeeded in reaching the candidates' tournament stage of the world championship. He had tournament victories at Palma de Mallorca. Greetings, Ole Pals. Thank you for 100 cheer bits. Uh, Ljubojevic had tournament victories at Palma de Mallorca in 1971, Las Palmas in 1974, Las Palmas again in 1975, Manila 1975, Vicanze, 1976, El Palo, 1979, Buenos Aires, 1979, Linares, 1985, a very strong tournament is or was the Linares tournament, Reggio Emilia, 1985-86, Belgrade, 1987, Brussels, 1987, Barcelona, 1989, and Reggio Emilia, 1990 to 91. So a good string, a good resume of victories in chess. And um, good to see Big Tyke in the house and Oli Pals. And we want to welcome the viewers over at chess.com slash TV. And we're grateful to chess.com for featuring us on the streamers showcase. And uh, we have a viewer over there, Nightly Night. Greetings to you. And at least I say a viewer, a viewer that has identified themselves in the chat over there. All right, so having introduced you to today's Grandmaster, let's get into some of the games played by Lyubomir Lyubovic. Say that three times fast. We're going to begin in Amsterdam at the IBM tournament, July 9th, 1975. It was the second round. And his opponent is none other than Wolfgang Ullmann. These were the grandmasters that I grew up with, basically learning from them. The ones that were always featured in all the chess magazines when I was growing up. And so they're, these games are very meaningful to me. We begin with an English opening. Pawn to c4. Lyubovic chooses the symmetrical variation on to c5. Knight to f3, knight to f6, knight to c3. The three knights system. Don't ask me why they call it that. I have no idea. e6. G3, B6, both sides intending to Fianchetto, their light squared bishops. Hey, Life Master Arthur Braden, haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you again in the stream. Bishop G2, Bishop B7, D4. Pawn takes the pawn, queen takes the pawn, and here a6 was played. Usually, d6 is the move, whereupon white castles, and we transpose to hedgehog defense with bishop e7. Rook d1, building a battery on the d-file, then pawn a6 is played followed by b3, 
Queen's knight to d7 is known as the flexible formation. And the most common line from this juncture is um, e4. Queen c7. Bishop a3. Knight c5. Pawn e5. Pawn takes the pawn. Queen takes the pawn. Rook c8 defending the queen. And the queens get traded off. That can be found in volume A as an alpha, section number 30 in your ECO. This game, however, continued with pawn a6 on move number 7. Castled, d6, and you can see here that you can again transpose to the hedgehog if you play rook d1 and bishop e7 and follow the line I showed. Instead, Wolfgang Ullmann chose to play b3. Ah. Uh, dinner time for the life master. After b3, uh, queen's knight to d7, bishop b2, and again you can go get to the hedgehog with the same two moves. But b bishop b2 by Ullmann, bishop e7, rook fd1, kingside castles, e4, Queen b8. Now the more frequent play is actually queen c7, followed by rook a c1 and queen's rook c8 here. Queen b8 by Ljubojevic instead. Here the most common reply is queen e3 and rook e8. However, Ullmann chose to play knight to d2. And I gather that the purpose of this move is to clear this diagonal to challenge the bishop after playing pawn to e5. That is my gather. I don't know for sure, but rook c8 was played. Queen e3, pawn b5. Pawn takes the pawn. Boudinot, 1776, greetings. Pawn takes the pawn. And a3 reaches a unique position never seen before or since. The correct move is knight takes the pawn, of course. And that has been played since this game has been played. But, um, yeah, a3 was not the best choice there. Bishop c6, pawn b4, knight b6, queen's rook c1, knight g4. Attacks the queen. Queen f4. Um, queen to e2 maintains better prospects for white. Queen f4. Not as good. Knight e5 is played. Bishop f1. Queen's knight c4. A lot going on here with this knight. It's pretty compelling move. It first of all hits this undefended bishop, so you pretty much have to trade. Knight takes the knight and... Does knight take knight back? 
No. Bishop to g5. Give that move a double exclamation point, ladles and jelly spoons. This is a great move, a move that most of us would not have found. The bishop is completely undefended, and yet he boldly goes where no man has gone before. Well, maybe not so much that. And the point here is that you cannot really take this because note the peace relationship that is immediately formed. And so that was just a lovely tactical strike, skewering the queen and the rook. Ulman decides to play knight takes knight, giving up the queen, amazingly enough. Bishop takes the queen, and knight takes the bishop. So he's picked up two minors. He's giving back one minor. Well, no. Ljubojevic decides to give back the queen, decides that's the better route, and he's correct. If he plays rook takes the knight, then pawn takes the bishop, and black has a queen and two rooks, but there's three pieces to that one queen. So Ljubojevic... That's right, metaphysician. Ljubojevic, metaphysician, I think we have a delay there. That's a good uh, couple of minute delay. Um, so Ljubojevic gives back the material. He plays, uh, bishop takes the rook. Knight takes the queen, bishop takes the bishop, knight takes the pawn, and that is hoping, but he's not going to get it in because I'm going to take the, the knight, but he's hoping to play knight to d7. Not going to happen. Rook takes, the king's rook takes the knight. Rook to b1. Still black emerges the better. He ends up with the exchange for a pawn. The bishop takes the A man, rook to B3, bishop to C1, only move. Knight takes the D man. White does get a pass pawn as compensation for the exchange. But is it enough? Rook a4 immediately attacks that passed pawn with a super attack. And by the way, uh, metaphysician, thanks for chiming in for the first time. Don't forget to hit the follow button if you have not already done so, and consider subscribing to the channel. So b5 moves the pawn to safety. Bishop back to a3, hitting the knight. Knight to c4, hitting the bishop. Bishop c5, eyeballing the king. Knight to e5 with the idea of forking the bishop and the rook. And rook to a2. That is stronger than taking the free-looking pawn and allowing the fork. Of course, rook to b7 prevents the fork altogether, and that would be another way to play it. Diabojevic 
goes for rook to a2. And rook to f3, he decides to defer knight to d7. If he plays knight to d7 right away, creating the fork, well, you probably recognized the purpose of rook to a2. That would allow bishop takes with check. And so, hence, Rook f3 defends that piece and renews the threat of knight d7. Rook d8. And white must now be concerned about pigs on the 7th with rook d d2. However, rook b7 was probably more appropriate here. Rook d8 it is, and I hope you guys are not having um, problems with lag here, because I'm definitely having problems with lag. So hopefully that'll iron out. All right, bishop to c4 is played here and i'm not sure why not just grab the f man here i mean it does allow the rook d to d2 hey wagner freitas greetings thank you and that could be wagner freitas i would suppose based on the Freitas. So I would suppose Wagner Freitas. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, anyway, Rook to C2. Renewing the threat of pigs on the 7th. And Bishop to B3. Perhaps getting the king out of dodge would be appropriate here. Bishop b3, rook b2 striking away. A metaphysician is fine, okay. Budino is having some starts and stops in his location. And of course, this threat is still on the uh, books as well. Bishop takes f2. Well, king g2 was played, and now the pigs are created on the 7th. Knight d3 hitting the, knight, the rook, but undefending, interfering with his own defense of the bishop. So that gets captured. Knight takes the bishop, rook takes the rook, and it was here that Wolfgang Ullmann resigned the game. <laughs>